I would go to Mombasa and people would say, you are the doctor on Metro. Welcome back. If you're joining us, this conversation has been happening for a couple of hours now, and we are delighted to pick it up from a lovely engagement on Avenue Hospital, and now Madison calls. So, <laughs> is it your first time to be called for a job? Well, I think if I reflect, it's probably the first time to be called for a job. Okay. Uh, but I had done, you know, internship. I had done an inter By the way, I forgot to mention to you mm -hmm. that when I finished medical school, mm -hmm. um, before I did my internship, mm. my, my yeah, my medical internship. Yeah, I did an internship with Amref. Amref Kenya office. Yes. Mm -hmm. There was a study in Kisumu on mm. sexually transmitted diseases, mm -hmm. and I was just newly graduated. I'm waiting to join my internship. There was a gap there. And I, someone told me there is something. I went, we interviewed, and I was sent by Amref to Kisumu, Homa Bay. I was in Homa Bay, Kisumu, Homa Bay, interviewing people, nurses in uh, health centers. So you're like a research uh, assistant? Like a research assistant as an intern. On an STI project. Yes. A sexually transmitted infections project. Exactly. So wow. that was my first time to work with Amref as an intern. Before now, I came back wow. to Amref later. Wow. So, wow. um, interesting. That in e which year? Is, ah, it's it's important we are just tracking the year so that we... Probably 96. 96, exactly. you had your first internship ever. At Amref. At Amref. Yes. Amref Kenya office. Exactly. Exactly. Hey. And the person who gave me that internship, uh -huh. when I joined Amref as a CEO, yeah. they were still working there. Oh my goodness. That's another story. We, anyway, we'll, so we'll connect the dots. Let's get back to... Uh, a couple of hours yes. later. All right. So let's get back to uh, the, the, the Madison. Madison. So when I was at, when I was at um, uh, Avenue, Avenue yeah. I actually say that my, many of the management opportunities mm -hmm. were given to me by a very close friend of mine called Dr. Amit Thaka. Working at Avenue? He was at Avenue. Mm -hmm. He was actually a co-director of Amref, mm -hmm. and, of Avenue, mm -hmm. and he had started this Avenue Healthcare, which is what was leading this health maintenance organization model. Yeah. So I worked very closely with him. Mm -hmm. So I, in a way, I kind of credit him for those early days for me to get into management. Mm. So when Madison called, I had learned quite a bit from Amit Thaka. So he was uh, sort of like, was he deliberately mentoring you? I would say he was deliberately mentoring me, mm -hmm. but he was also the visionary mm. for this whole model, mm. clinical management model. Mm. He was a visionary. Mm. But because of my interests mm. on public health mm. and equity, mm. I kind of latched onto mm -hmm. him equity. Mm -hmm. So I worked very closely with him. Mm -hmm. So when Madison called, it was very difficult mm. for me to leave Avenue because I had become <laughs> part of it. Yeah. You know, patients yeah. and this ecosystem had become part of Avenue. How long had you worked? Three years. Three years is yeah. significant. Yes. I, I mean, you have learned the and system. A lot and you of have staff, built, yeah. you know, and built and and the innovation, yeah. you know. So a lot of the things yeah. had my, yeah. you know, fingerprints. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, your um, you are your family is happy because you are providing properly. I'm providing properly. Yeah. You know, and then I'm now having debates in my head. Yeah. Should I abandon this thing? Yeah. And then go and do obstetrics and gynecology as a specialization. Oh. Okay. I had that debate in my head at that point. And I really enjoyed it. Even even mm. me going into develop the product for mm -hmm. for antenatal care mm -hmm. was not by chance. It's because mm. I really loved obstetrics. Is it because you? I, I, so you, de you you developed that interest in campus yes. those days. Yes, and that's why you like even were awarded best students for for, for that because yeah. I had a lot. Of, it was out of passion and mm. interest, and I think it was because I saw the centrality of women and children mm. in general health well being mm. of a community. Mm. So for me, it was very straightforward that you can resolve women and children health issues, mm. you've actually resolved a big part. So it mm. was just passion for mm. that mm. thing. Mm. So I have now learned all this, mm -hmm. my passion for equity, I've mm. learned that actually healthcare should be affordable. Remember mm. I told you we were charging premium. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned healthcare needs to mm. be affordable. Mm. So I would say my foundation for UHC mm. comes from mm. that point, mm. okay? Universal so, health coverage, you started connecting. I started those. connecting the doors of affordability, yeah. financing, quality at that point. Mm. So I now get um, uh, to Madison, mm. and they actually offer me the opportunity. So the person who calls you, why are they calling you? Have they heard about you? Like why? I was actually called by uh, the current chair of the Kenya Health Federation, Dr. Gakombe Kanyende. Dr. Gakombe. He was the CEO of Metropolitan. CEO of Metropolitan Hospital it, at that point. At that point? He was founder and CEO. Of Metropolitan? Of Metropolitan Hospital in Buruburu. 
But this is not Madison, okay, so? So, <laughs> he had been called uh -huh. by Madison. Oh. And he had been told, we are looking for this. Mm -hmm. And he told them, there's only one person I know who can do that job. What are they looking for? They were looking for somebody who, so Madison Insurance had, as insurances do, general insurance department, mm -hmm life insurance department right within the general insurance is where medical falls mm. but now the medical was being handled by people who didn't understand medical it was purely just a product you come you pay premiums and we offer you a set of hospitals to go to if you are sick and we get the claims and pay this is getting very interesting you have <laughs> there's a bit of marketing that yes. you are doing at yes. at at, yeah. at at avenue yeah there is, and that's medical marketing. Yes. But nonetheless, it's marketing. It's marketing. There is insurance that you had started connecting yes. there. Yes. But you still have this public health. I have the public health. Yeah. And I'm a medical doctor. Yeah. So now, Madison is looking, how do we find somebody who can now create the medical services department mm -hmm. within general insurance, mm. but now it's a concrete department, which they didn't have, which looks at marketing for health insurance mm. for Madison, mm. looks at premiums, looks at quality of the members, looks at where they go, which hospitals, and also reducing cost of care. Right. So Kanyenji then says, mm. this is the person I know who a can person. do this. Mm. So I go to Madison, mm. I meet the general manager of insurance and mm. the CEO, mm. and they're like, mm. we want you to do this. Mm. So I leave mm. and I join Madison. How are the conversations with the, the, your avenue? Very difficult. Pain, yeah. Very difficult. Mm. But I had to move on. Yeah. Like I was feeling, yeah. we had done so much. The, the, it was the point for me to move. Yeah. So uh, I actually, um, it was my most difficult goodbye Transition. career moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It was very, very difficult. Mm. It was actually very emotional. Mm. So I moved to Madison. Mm. Now, we start working on the medical services. Mm. I have a team. Mm. And now, remember, I had learned that mm. medical insurance needs to be affordable mm. because it needs to be equitable. Mm -hmm. So I start working on the pricing. Mm -hmm. So we work on the pricing. Mm. We reduce the pricing. We create the products. I travel the country, mm. sign up hospitals, mm. agree with them on schedules of payments. Mm. Like if you have somebody in serial section, this is the maximum you can charge us. Drugs, this is what we agree. So I did all that. But now, let me take you back a few steps. When I was at Avenue, mm. I started working with GlaxoSmithKline as a radio expert for their programs. Okay? So like appearing on radio, radio. Metro FM then, mm -hmm. uh, KBC Radio. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is I would spend my Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. at the studio at mm. KBC mm -hmm. and we would record programs for the week that would run in the morning on Metro FM, mm. that would be about common calls. So the same work I was doing with companies, oh. I now started packaging it for radio. So I would be running, even, you know, like on Metro, every morning there would be a show of 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's premium, yeah. every morning. Every morning, talking about how to manage common calls, how to avoid some problems, very, like bringing science to the common person. And I did that. For probably two years without pay. So you are a, a common radio. So you are yeah. on, on morning, on breakfast. On Metro FM. I would go to Mombasa and people would say, You are the doctor on Metro. And that was 99, 2000. And your voice is like a Jeff, what was his, what was his name? Jeff Mwangemi. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's, so there are not many radio voices at that time. So your voice is, is distinct. My voice was distinct. Even yeah. now, yeah. actually, I didn't know my voice was distinct it until now I go distinct. to the villages. Yeah. And people are like, and I've worn a kofia yeah. and I have a mask. Yeah. And when I speak, they say, are you the doctor the of COVID? Yeah. And I ask, how did you know? They're like, your voice. Yeah. So, yeah. So I did a lot of that and it was for free. It was just passion. I would go every Sunday afternoon. We go to church, take my family back home, go to the studio, yeah. record like many episodes yeah. for the week. Yeah. And we'll just talk about common calls. And then GSK would then just, advertise. Just common calls or, or a common bunch of other ailments. things? Oh, common, common ailments. ailments. Okay. Ailments. All right. Largely calls because the medicines, the over-the-counter medicines for GSK were largely okay. cough syrups. I get, you I know, get that, yeah. Cold yeah. and those kinds of yeah. things. Yeah. So but then but for had, two years, was that content, you know, was there enough content not to be re 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 There was a lot of content. Okay. Because it wasn't only common cause. Mm. There was also common stomach problems. Mm. There was pain. Because mm. it was it was around all the common over-the-counter medicines of right. GSK. Right. Then GSK would then advertise in the intro mm. and outro. Okay. So 
But Fantastic. I was the doc. It was it was my voice that yeah. I was talking about these things. So you are doing this because you are a, you know you are a doctor. Because I'm a doctor. Yeah. Basically. Okay. You're not doing this. It it wasn't your JD. No. Wow. It was just passion. Yeah. Until one day, the you know again a, a very good friend of mine who's remained a good friend, mm. called Shiro Merengo. She mm. was then the marketing manager at GSK. Yeah. Came to me and said, "Oh, you know, Dr. G, this is going to be Dr. G. Mm. We've now put in a little budget mm. for your show, mm. so we'll be paying you 10k a month." Mm. I'm like, "Okay, mm. what am I?" Because mm. I was not there for the mm. money, mm. and that's important mm. because I think when we come to young people, mm. there is this relationship in their minds between work and pay, mm. and I think. The moment you disconnect the two, the mm. pay always comes. Okay. The moment you disconnect M work, work and, and pay, pay, and you focus on work, it the always pay pays. will follow. It always pays. Mm. It doesn't matter when. Mm. And I think for me, when I worked with GSK that time mm. without pay, mm. it wasn't because I want to work with them. It mm. wasn't because they're paying me. It's mm. just a passion I found. Mm. Now, this is the reason I'm telling you this story. Mm. Is because as soon as I moved from Avenue to, to Madison, Madison. Mm. in six months, mm. GSK called. Oh, yeah. So wait, what was your title at Madison? Medical Services Manager. Medical Services Manager. Yes. So you you have a team you're managing. You yes. you are doing this insurance yes. package, and I want to I, I, yeah. I want to learn a little bit more yeah. about the insurance. Like when you say you are packaging offers, yes. and what does that at the time yeah. look like? So this is how that looks like. Mm. So. Remember when I was at Alzheimer's Avenue, I was medical quality manager. Mm -hmm. So I now moved on to medical services manager at Madison. Mm -hmm. This is how it looks like. The insurance company wants to sign up companies yeah. and individuals. At mm -hmm. that point, they had no individual product. Mm -hmm. Companies mm -hmm. to say we are signing our 500 staff mm -hmm. to your medical cover. Mm -hmm. And they have access to inpatient, a million shillings, mm -hmm. outpatient, 200,000. Mm -hmm. And for that, we are paying... 40,000 per member to you as a premium. Yeah. When our members get sick, they'll go to Nairobi Hospital, MP yeah. Shah, wherever, yeah. and then you receive the claims and pay. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, the challenge with that model mm -hmm. is something you call loss ratio. Loss ratio. ratio. Because mm. you have transferred the risk of medical costs yeah. to Madison yeah. from the organization. Mm. Okay? So, people whose premiums are paid... Mm. And up to now, this is a big challenge, mm. Maxi. In insurance. P in insurance. Mm. People consider the premium paid as mm. an entitlement because companies I, sell it as such. I do. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're employed yeah. or, and then the company says, as part of your package, we pay you this salary, yeah. but we are also paying you for you a for premium yeah. of 50,000 yeah. shillings. Yeah. You know? 120 or this oh, much. 120. Yeah. For you, yeah. for medical. Cover. Yeah. So for many people, when they don't spend that money in the year, they feel like they've been cheated. Yeah. Okay. So you want to go for so, for like visits and you want this. to go visit yeah. so that you get your money. You mm. take your family. Mm. You know, and therefore you feel mm. I've not exhausted my medical cover for this year. Mm. Whereas actually, people don't realize it is pooled risk. That actually you've done actuarial, you know there will be. 30% of people who will spend their 120,000 mm. and more, mm. and there will be 70% who won't spend, mm. and those 70%, their mm. premium will be used to cover the cost because no cost of admission mm. is worth 120,000. No. When you go to theater, mm. it's a million. Yeah. Who pays for the balance? Yeah, the rest who between didn't 120 pay. and million mm. is the one who didn't claim. Mm. So if everyone decides to claim their 120, mm. then you're bust. Mm. So the medical insurance companies have to do something called you have to do quality assurance to watch your medical loss ratio mm. and generally we say that if you receive premiums mm. you should not spend more than 80 percent of those premiums providing the costs of care because the other 20 percent is what you need to oversee to pay your staff mm. to make sure the program is managed mm. but many medical insurance companies operate at 120 percent loss ratio so there have been medical insurance companies that actually go on a loss. They don't make any money on medical. Actually, majority, not some, mm. majority are... do not make any money from medical. So medical that's insurance... That's why it continues to become expensive, and that's why the service is not good. Mm. Because it's not, it's not done as a profitable business. So what do they do with it? They use this as a rider. So you sell your medical insurance, we know we'll make a loss, but because we are giving you medical insurance, you also give us your general business to insure your cars, your buildings, fire. So the medical is a rider. So who cares about it? 
you see? And it's, it's, it, it, it's a strange thing because as, as um, I mean, it's for two reasons I'm yeah. thinking right now. There is medical, is there a company that is medical insurance fully? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, those companies mm -hmm. that are medical insurance fully, mm -hmm. like AR, yeah. Okay? Yeah. like Resolution Health. How did, how did they used to? They used to do it. AR did it through like Avenue. Yeah. Even Avenue was a mm -hmm. medical insurance company. At the time. At the that, time. Yeah. Uh -huh. They used to do it because they followed this model of the provider model. Mm -hmm. Not the preferred HMO. provider. Mm -hmm. The HMO model. Mm -hmm. Health maintenance organization. Mm -hmm. So I take your risk, mm -hmm. but I take the service delivery as well. Right. Because then I can control it. Yeah. I can actually know when you need a CT scan. Yeah. I can know when you need an MRI. Yeah. But when you disconnect the provider mm. and the risk taker, mm. the provider without having a reward system mm. that actually to controls. If you go to a hospital, the doctor doesn't care because they don't know what your arrangement you have with insurance. They They're like, you're having headache uh, recurrent. Let's do an MRI. Yeah. That's 50,000 gone. Yeah. But should you probably have done other things before the MRI? Maybe you could have taken better history. Yeah. Maybe you could have done some blood tests. Or just as Maybe you've understood my, where the patient comes from. Yeah. Maybe they are stressors. Yeah. Because medicine is seven and ninety percent history taking. Ninety percent. Yeah. The tests come to help you clear the differential diagnosis. Verification, basically. Verification. Mm. So by the time I'm doing test one, two, three, four, mm. I have taken enough history mm. and I've examined you. Mm. And I know it is likely to be one, two, or three. Mm. Because it's actually, you put together the history you give me. Mm. So if you say you're coughing, I ask you, how long? Mm. How long has it been? Mm. What type of cough is it? Mm. How do you feel when you cough? Mm. I take that history. As mm. I take the history, I'm ruling out. Mm. If the cough is a few days, mm. then I don't think about TB. Mm. If the cough is more than two weeks, mm -hmm. then I think think about TB. Mm. You get it? So mm. you take the history. Mm. Then after that, you're like, now let me examine you. Mm. When mm. you examine, mm. it now rules out more other things that you thought about. Mm. You took your stethoscope, you mm. hear the type of cough, mm. Mm. you are told maybe this cough happens in the evening, mm. not every day. Mm. You're like, now I'm thinking mm. asthma, mm. you know, constrictive mm. bronchitis. Mm. I'm thinking, do you smoke? Mm. Uh -huh. You know, so mm. you, all these questions, mm. and after you examine, mm. narrow you down to what we call a differential diagnosis. Mm. The tests mm. are to distinguish mm. the differential this diagnosis. Or this. But if you do not have that time, mm. and you're not paying, mm. and the patient is not paying, it's very easy for you to say, Okay, cough. All right, go for a chest x-ray. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. Because, I mean, the cost is not yeah. a conversation. Yeah. But if you are the one who is insuring and yeah. providing, yeah. then you consistently have to review yeah. your decisions. Hence, quality control. Hence, quality control. Okay. That's why I was medical quality manager. Okay. Because then I would have conversations with the doctors and mm. say, mm. yesterday we had three MRIs. Mm. Let's discuss whether they were needed. Mm. And then we would have a group meeting. Mm. I say, yeah, I did the MRI because one, two, three. Mm. The others are learning. Mm. So no one will just do an MRI mm. because they think they don't have time to examine you. Mm. Okay. Mm. So that relationship mm. is extremely critical mm. to us having affordable health care. Healthcare. And so as as the patient and as the you know as the wanjiko yes. mwanenchi yes. you you are not i'm not somewhere thinking oh the doctor doesn't want to get get uh, because we are when you go to a hospital you, we believe everything the doctor exactly. says so yes. you're like whatever the doctor says is final authority yes. Yes. so um and often there's been huge conversations between oh will the insurance pay Yes, and then there is also this other um, yes. this other conversation of entitlement. So bridging that con gap between will the insurance pay, yes. and then I'm entitled for this. Right. Um, In, it, this is a value chain management. Yeah. Meaning that if I was running an insurance company today, I would have a relationship with all the providers of not a financial relationship, mm. a clinical relationship. Explain. Where that. we actually say. These are my patients that probably have 100,000 members mm -hmm. in my insurance company. Mm -hmm. They are going to these 100 hospitals. Mm. We would have a connection, either through nurses or doctors, mm. between the doctors seeing our patients and what we are doing. And mm. every year would review mm -hmm. and say, let's have a review meeting. Mm. Say, last year, you guys did 100 MRIs. Mm. Let's discuss. And we bring an expert mm. and say, in each of those cases of the MRI was done, mm. was it necessary? Mm. What else could have been done? Mm. Then you see, there's, a, there's humanity. Everyone wants to do the right thing. Mm. The moment you start to challenge through 
uh, a kind of uh, professional conversation, mm. the doctors who are seeing your patients also mm. start to think, mm. should I do this? Mm. Maybe I should do more evidence-based, yeah. you see, mm. uh, medicine, because I mm. owe an explanation at the end of the year mm. to the decisions I made. Mm. But when you leave it purely as a accounting department and insurance company relationship, mm. then there'll be a huge disconnect. And that's what's going on yeah. in this country. Oh. That is why medical costs are high. Yeah. Also insurance premiums are high. And then there, there's loss. And there's loss. Mm. So the insurance companies only use other insurance to cover that loss. Mm. So you ask the okay. question, how mm. are the others successful? Mm. Resolution Health mm -hmm. had a model that was successful mm -hmm. because they would have a very tight group mm -hmm. of providers mm. that they would work with. Mm -hmm. AR is kind of what has come as close as possible mm. to a perfect mm. health maintenance mm. organization model. Mm. For Until more recently when they started being bought and now it's gone to, there's something we call Pro, uh, preferred provider. Yeah. Preferred provider means I'm an insurer and I'll give a list of hospitals to my members. Mm. It's up to them to choose which one to mm. go to. Mm. And then my relationship with those hospitals mm. is with the accounting department. Only the claims I pay. That model is loose. Mm. Okay? Because mm. it gets being pushed by patients, mm. not by members because mm. they're like me, I don't want to go to this hospital. I want to. I want to go to this one. And if I'm not allowed to go to this one, then that's not a good insurance company and my employer doesn't care about me because I'm not being allowed to go to the premium hospitals. Never mind. The, and they are, you, they are like three, Aga Khan, exactly. Nairobi. You see, yeah, yeah. and if you're not being allowed to go there, then mm. your employer doesn't care about mm. you. Mm. Whereas maybe there are second tier hospitals mm. that offer exactly the same quality mm. and even better. Mm. But brand wise, mm. no, I want to go to these hospitals. Mm. So that relationship mm. needs to be managed better. Mm. Okay. Mm. And uh, what has happened now mm. is that um, with, uh, with, the increasing demand for health insurance. Mm. You have many and many more insurance companies entering into that field, mm. but they are all making losses, so mm. they keep increasing their premiums. Mm. This is why universal health coverage mm. needs to be government-led, mm. which cannot be private sector. -led. Private sector-led, no. because the government needs to put in uh, controls. Mm. If you go to countries that have been successful, mm. there are price points that are determined through a study. Mm sponsored by the government mm. and says if somebody is insured mm. you cannot charge them more than this for certain section doesn't mm. matter whether you're going to a private hospital mm. or a public hospital mm. so price controls mm. in or professional fees controls mm. in the health sector mm. are not unusual mm. and they need to be led by government mm. so that then the service provided can be standardized yeah yeah